two profane commands managed to kill a pair of Sig River guys, and that made all the difference. And that's a card that Shuei Nakamura just did not have access to. Right. And the, the, the Garrick really put pressure on Royce to use his mana and attack. It's true. Otherwise, he was just going to face down a... Not, not a never-ending stream of 3-3s, three but an army that was going to get quickly out of hand for him. Absolutely. Now, what happens to this matchup after sideboarding? Well, I don't know, because Charles King did not talk to Zvi. <laughs> he said if, if he can't figure out how to beat Merfolk on his own... Yeah, we're talking to Zvi in the, in the semi-final. Help. You know, Zvi Malchowitz had identified, okay, here's the American. That's the hero of our top eight from Zvi's perspective. So gave him some advice, gave him a sideboard plan, which, uh, you know, he needed some help. He needed a little bit of luck in that semifinal match, but he also needed a good plan. And so right. Zvi helped him come up with that. But, yeah, the Merfolk matchup, a little more straightforward. By now, Gibby has a plan, I'm sure, knows exactly what he wants to do with his deck against, against Merfolk. Right. He has Slaughter Packs. He has Shriek Maws. I don't think he's bringing in Skull Lines or Cloud Thrashers here. The only question, I guess, is what comes out. Right. Also, his kitchen thinks he wants to put that. Doesn't seem doesn't like he right. answer. No. So. So what does he take out? That becomes the interesting question. You know how good is. He might. What he might do is just take out a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, sort of shave some numbers. Actually, the Civic Wayfinders are a little a little slow for him. And according to our spotter on the floor, that is exactly what he's done. He's taken out three Civic Wayfinders and a Boreal Druid. Okay. Two yeah. Three, two yeah. Three yeah. Exactly what we expected. Four mana is a lot of mana to take out of a deck. But I'm not sure what would be better. His deck isn't particularly big for this matchup. He's still got the Colossus. He's still got the Profane Command. But he doesn't need a ton of mana to use, to use Profane Command effectively here. What about the other side? What does Jan Roos have? Well, Jan's got those uh, Sun Lances that he brought in the last time he faced an Alpha. Sure. Uh, you know, very good dealing with uh, your precarious perfects, and he yeah. has to kill a perfect Absolutely. out of the table. Sun Lance seems like a no-brainer. Uh, he has serrated arrows, which is kind of interesting. Huh. But I don't think he's bringing that in. Uh, possibly brings in the Force Crypt to Command. Uh, certainly brings in another Sower of Temptation. The Reveler? Yeah. Brought him in against Nakamura. Yeah, brought him in against Nakamura. What a game. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly how he won one of the games. Gets his Sig back. Gets his... He's taking out the Curse Catchers. Oh, yeah. Those aren't very exciting here, I guess. Also with the Profane Commands. Oh, your choice. Okay. Okay. It's his, his deck is significantly uh, slower now, then, right? He's taken out a bunch of one drops. He's brought in like rebel arcs. Surprisingly, no one's taken that option yet. So. <laughs> That's three out of five for the Pro Tour title. For 25 Pro points and forty thousand dollars, Charles can be up a game. So players draw their game two hands. What are, you, what are you thinking about these two players as we've watched them uh, make their way through this bracket? Uh, any, anything stand out about them for you? They're good. Yeah, I was thinking the same exact thing. They, they seem very composed. They seem very thoughtful. They seem very, very, very aware of the game. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, you you can easily understand how they made their way through the Swiss. Absolutely. Jan Roos is going to mulligan down to six. I've especially been impressed. I mean, we have, we've, we've watched more of Jan Roos to play than Charles Gindy so far, but I've been very, very impressed with his sort of in, in-game decisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Gindy, and he seems totally comfortable. I mean, it's like he's been trained for this moment for 10 years. He's played a lot of magic. He's played a lot of, you know, reasonable pressure situations. You know, Grand Prix championship matches three times. A number of Pro Tour finishes performance over the years. It's interesting, too. They, it seems like they both come into today determined to have fun. Well, again, if you, if, you know, the first time you're here, I mean, we, we talked about it with Nakamura, right? Where there seemed to be... This You're isn't fun for Nakamura. I mean, I'm sure it's fun to be in the top five, but he really wants that win. He's right. thinking about that win. He can see that trophy. Right. He can, see, you know, sense the legacy. He can see the resume coming together. Right. These guys are, you know, quote unquote, just happy to be here. Right. It helps. It's easier to play that way. I absolutely believe that. I mean, you'll see a lot of times where, you know, a player will stop taking, stop 
playtesting quite so much. You'll see, you know, a player who's maybe been out of the game comes back. Oh, they're just happy to be here, but they still know how to play. They're still right. really good. Right. And sometimes it's just yeah, I remember that Walton, comfort helps you play better. Worlds in Berlin, the, the next stop on the Pro Tour also. Uh, <laughs> Worlds in Berlin was an event where five or six of the players in the top eight were people who had just said, you know what, I missed Magic. I, 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 I qualified for Nationals. Whatever I did, I came back. And, yeah, I was just really trying to have a good time, and they all did well. I remember, I remember really seeing that. Mm-hmm. During that event, I mean, Gindy certainly uh, seems to embody that. <laughs> yeah, he's just smiling and uh, having a good time. Gindy now it's Gindy's turn to look. It is draw. Roos has now having less of a good cards. time here. <laughs> I haven't seen any of your voices in special visions yet. I don't imagine he's only got two. I don't imagine if he's left him in for this matchup. I think he has. Can be looking at seven. I'm not quite sure what they are, but he decides to keep them. Let's go. All right. John leads with an island and says go. Go. Neither player has a turn one play. Lord of, Lord of Atlantis. Take a point of vanquish. Ren's run vanquisher for Gindy. Feels a perfect. Now there's the heroes of the story, right? This match is really the Lord versus the perfect. And the Lord's been around for so long. Right? This is this is this is an alpha. Yeah. This is an alpha set. No, this card. is a kitchen table deck from 15 years people, ago. People that's, have always wanted this deck to be good. It's from lots of people for lots of years. Yeah, there's always been sort of these narrow windows where fish, which is what it's generally referred to, has been. And I think it's called fish because there were just never enough merfolk. You had to play a lot of. <laughs> you had to play a lot of other cheap creatures from other, you know, yeah, tribes. I mean, the merfolk are fish. They got tails and fins and gills and stuff. It was kind of a more broad. Right, here's the perfect. It resolves, so that is now a 4-4 four, four vanquisher. Merfolk has the second place on the Pro Tour, right in the hands of Nicholas Labar yes. in Rome. Somehow managing to beat almost enough Academy decks, but fell to Hovey in the finals. Not, not bitter about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he knocked me out of top eight. With, I fizzled and drew like 50 right. cards. Couldn't stitch it together. Somehow Nevenero's disc came in and had time to untap and blow up like 30 permanents. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So no, no, I'm not still there. Have the Elves been in the finals of the Pro Tour before? Well, uh, we had a lot of Elf decks at Worlds, but they did not make it to the finals. We've had, I mean, I'm sure Rock decks with Elves. Sure. I'm trying to think, has there been... A tribal deck. I mean, is Goblin deck on the Pro Tour? Yeah, Dave Price one with a Goblin deck. Well, not, not a very really tribal really. deck. I don't know if we had the, the sort of tribal deck win. Ooh, a Solar of Temptation. Steals the Perfect. No, it has Somehow, how did the Lord and the, and the Perfect get on the same team all of a sudden? That's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> Those are some exciting Muta Vaults, though, let me tell you. <laughs> Smells like uh, profane terror shriek maw buffet here. I think there's a Garrick in his hand too. Mm. But I agree with his play. Let's get rid of that sower <laughs> before counter magic comes up. All the islands are tapped. It's time to reclaim my perfect. And. It's on McGoy. There's three cards. And an instant and a creature in the graveyard, so it's 2-3. Vanquisher comes over. Yep. Yeah, no, no land drop for the perfect. Or is that turn four? Yeah. Perfect summoning second anyway. Oh, you're right, right. 